So. And I know the Northern Realms deck is good for if you boost stuff in advance. Well, maybe not in advance, but having boosted cards is what that is about. A card with which it was played was fixed. Oh, I see. CD Project Red breaking all the uh, the powerful things. Then. Uh, Slave Hunter we've seen today. Salamandra Assassin. Place a bounty on an enemy unit. Uh, bounty on a unit with the status. What's the status? Is destroyed or banished. Opponent gains coins equal to the base power. Wow. There can only be one unit with bounty status on each side of the board at each time. So my, like, Yighurn, which has 15 base power, uh, and can be killed easily because it gets killed when it has no armor left. You'd probably have lots of people trying to put bounties on that, maybe. Uh, Drakenborg. Drakenborg. Is that another... Oh, is that the card that went with the agent? And then our choices. So we could have the Cursed Damsel. Um, which has Thrive. And the order to halve own power and destroy an enemy unit with power up to the power removed from self. So basically give another unit to... Or, you know, if you've powered it up, then more. It's Thrive plus damage. Damsel is better, I believe. So, I mean, yeah, as well, if I'm going for a Thrive deck, it could be very useful to have. Oh, yeah, and you... So, its own power, when you use the order, you would have Thrived it up maybe a bit more. So it's not just going to be four down to two. It will be, you know, maybe like seven down to three and a half. I assume it will round in some way. What do these others two do? Uh, the bear witcher, when he deploys, damages himself by three. And if you have less than four cards, will damage self and an enemy unit by three. Fine. And the kid when he revenant has an order to damage unit by one and spawn a base copy of the revenant on this row. Well, we'll just go with the damsel then. So we'll probably try and put her in the deck. Let's go with the monster first. Feast of Blood. Purify an enemy unit and damage it by three. If you control the vampire, also give it bleeding. So that synergizes with Vampires and Bleeding, which I don't have. Uh, Passiflora Peaches. Horde 4. What's Horde? Trigger this ability if you possess the specified number of coins or more. At the end of your turn, boost self by 1. Fine. There's a lot of money with these people. Lots of new ability statusy things. The Turir, Turir Search Skirmisher. When the unit is discarded, summon it from your graveyard to your melee row. But you'd have to discard it, not just get it killed. Discarding's another Skellige thing, I see. Move a card from your hand to your graveyard. Yeah. And the Half-Elf Hunter, who has Harmony, which I tried reading the other day and I got a bit confused. Harmony is free self by one or the specified amount, which is just one here. Whenever you play a non-neutral unit whose primary category is unique among all of your units. So like if you're playing an elf bandit and then you play an elf human, no way that doesn't make sense, a human bandit, that has a unique category primary category. Harmony was a thing back in 2020. I see. Goody. I'll just ignore it then. 
Um, well, I already have these two, so I might as well go with this one. But what is it? Spawn two volunteers on an allied row. If you control a boosted unit, also spawn. Uh, also boost the spawned volunteers by one. I mean, presumably you would have a boosted unit. And let's start with the offering. Destroy a unit with four or less power, then boost a unit in your deck by two. Doesn't sound terrible. Useful for getting rid of something with low power. Very good, even. Inspirational Ballad. Give an allied unit vitality. And quite a bit of vitality. Lyrian Scytheman. Uh, uh, it ignores armor and shield. Oh, yeah. So similar to the... Um, the Geralt on which you know destroys a unit with nine and gives you carryover like as in the boost for the next round because it's into the deck I've never played Ballad give an allied unit vitality I suppose maybe there's it's the Squire Tail which have um vitality synergy so Um, I've never played that, and I have 1,500 hours of Gwent gameplay. <laughs> Damn, you crazy. <laughs> um, does that mean that you've used it as an eater? Or... And spontaneous evolution. Boost an allied unit by four. And gain an additional effect based on the unit's category. Insectoid spawn three drones in the boosted units row. Uh, oh yeah, so I have seen this card before. Um, Hammond. Deploy an enemy unit to the other row and give it bleeding. Increase bleeding duration. Or Asaya bar and a hit. On the melee road, shuffle a card from your opponent's graveyard into their deck. Is that useful? Why would you want to shuffle a card from your opponent's graveyard into the deck? If they're doing something... If they're putting lots of stuff out the graveyard, but then you're still giving it back to them. Shoot. Or Karathi. These could be some very useful things you're saying. Um, but I'm not sure I understand Shoot or Karathi. Like who they are and what their abilities are. To replay a legendary special. All quite rarely used. Um, Black Blood is simpler. The next time an enemy receives a boost, destroy that unit and sell. So it doesn't really matter which one I take. I like this one, because it's a bit random. I don't think it's really helpful. But, I mean, you could play your own card twice. So... Not what I'm going to play. And go to the next one. Two monsters. Let's go with those ones first. So, a Plumard, which is a vampire bleeding thing. Sure. Feast of Blood, which is a vampire bleeding thing. We saw that a second ago. Um, Griffin Witcher Adept, so he has a shield and transforms an allied Witcher into a base copy of the Griffin Witcher Adept. So maybe if you've got a Witcher which is um, you know, lost a couple points. That could be useful. And um, Krite Warcryer. Krite? I don't know. Uh, Bloodthirst 1. Bloodthirst again. Number of damaged enemy units required. At the end of your turn, boost self by 1. And our choice this time. 
Johnny, whoever Johnny is, uh, whenever you play a special card, damage a random enemy unit by two. That's a special card. What counts as a special card? I mean, lots of things are special. Etrial is an elf bander who, when you deploy, damages an enemy unit by three, and if you control someone else, then you can damage it by seven instead. Who is the someone else? A beast. A beast. And if you deploy it in the other order, then you get to damage adjacent units by three. So you definitely want both of those in your hand at the same time to choose which way around. Or you can have Hey May Flaminica. And then you turn heal all other units on this row by one. Wow. I like him I like uh, her. Although it's heal, so that doesn't that won't uh go over the base power, presumably. Yeah, if it's lower than base power. Restore it either to base power or by the specified amount. Anyway. Um I suppose I need one of those to have two of those. Stammelford's Tremors. Damage all enemy units by one. Fine. Boost self by one for each boosted enemy unit. Which could be good against Northern Realms, maybe? Uh, Dryad Ranger. Which is the harmony thing I think I saw last week. Um, either damages or poisons the unit. Straightforward. Treasure Huntress, which is has profit and can hoard or fee. Trigger this ability if you possess the specified number of coins, yes. But you could also pay for it. So if you have nine coins. You could infuse an allied unit with this. And you could also then pay three times. So you could have it like four times if you had nine coins. And then by the end, three turns later, you'd end up with more coins than you started with. Maybe. And our epic pick. Um, Lake Guardian. This unit's harmony is also triggered in hand and deck. Uh, if you have nine coins, fee can be used. Yeah, I meant the... But when you play it, you would have Horde, so the Horde would activate immediately. No. Golem. That's tribute. Well, we'll come back to the Horde thing in a second. Um, we'll pick this, then I'll just confirm that you're correct. Because <laughs> you're definitely going to be correct in comparison to me, but... Um, what does the Golem do? He, when you deploy him, reveals the top unit from your opponent's deck and and damage self by its power, then shuffle it back. And... Um, is that good? Because if the thing on top is like one, then sure, you end up with an 11 strength. But if it's like a six, then you've only got a five strength card. Uh, Lake Guardian played in Harmony decks. Well, I'm not really a thing. I mean, I already have one of these guys who's good if you have lots of Fire Sworn tokens. Um, I guess... Yeah, I'm not sure I fully understand this. The bird is good. Let's go with the bird. And then, let's go read this again. Trigger this ability if you possess the specified number of coins or more. So that's what I was saying, is that if you have nine coins, and you play the card, it triggers this ability. Although that's... Playing it, it's not a deploy thing, but it's just... It just does it anyway. No? Fee is unlocked, if you have nine coins. But it, it, so it's not both? 
because you can't like this says trigger this ability if you possess the specified number of coins you can't have nine coins without having three coins like you're always going to have three coins if you have nine coins oh if you have nine coins then you can use V. That's that is. It should have like a colon here then. But okay, I see. I see what you mean though. I liked my thing better, but <laughs> but yeah, okay, I understand now. So you need to have enough coins. You can't just keep using this because that's maybe too powerful. But in three turns, that will pay itself back. Anyway, next Kirk. And we have Demiritum. Demiritium. Something made up uh, shackles. Lock a unit and damage it by three. It's not too bad. Um, Dryad Enchantress, who has Symbiosis. Whenever you play a nature card, of which this isn't one, spawn a wandering treant on a random allied row and set its power equal to the number of symbioses you control. More confusing things. Spotter. Look at the top three units in your opponent's deck, then choose one and gain armor equal to its power. I mean, then you could end up with a lot of armor. And then you have the order to lose all your armor and look at the top units of your deck up to that amount. Then choose one and gain vitality equal to its power. If it's a bronze soldier, boost self by its power instead. Like... <laughs> Again, seems like there's lots of things that could synergize well with. Um, payroll specialist, move a unit to the other row. Sure. Oh, tribute one, so you need to on deploy you may choose to spend the specified amount of coins. So it's like fee, but only on deploy. And in typical fashion, having spent some scraps, we we find a griffin. But I suppose that's it doesn't really matter. We will just um ignore it. So we can either have a Scholar, who gives an allied unit a couple of vitality. Doesn't seem like a lot of vitality, if you ask me. Or we can shuffle an allied Bronze Mage back into your deck, then play a random Bronze Mage from your deck and boost it by zero. Increase the boost by one for each unit with patience you play this game. Scholar is just bad. I mean, it sounds complicated, mathematically. Oh, sorry, this one. Yeah, the Scholar. It, it's like a low unit and gives something else to vitality. I mean, if you have a vitality deck, then maybe it becomes useful, but then there's probably other better cards which have the vitality. I'm going to go with the, um, the Apple Girls. Okay. Was there... Oh, we're out of... We're out of awe for the, uh, the thing just now. Sure. Was there something we were considering should go into the deck? Um... I do need to turn... You have 26 cards in deck. Yeah. Because we added something. What's the last thing we added? Uh, or did I click on... Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't add the Whispers. But maybe it's because we added to scratch a lot and didn't remove something. 
Oh, that was before. Or the ghoul? I thought we removed a ghoul. As I said, we don't need two of these. Okay. One ghoul is gone. Um It was the, was it the Fisher King? Did we say move any card from the top of your deck? Or two random gold cards from your deck, then play one and move the other to the back of the top. I don't know. Maybe I don't need this. If not, I can't think of anything else that we got, which may be... Um, Nagglefar... Was that this at the top? So this would fit. And you'd have this one and not the Fisher King. Because the Fisher King adds power, whereas that doesn't. But that allows you to pick. Because this is two random gold cards, whereas this is like any card. Why would you... Why would you limit yourself to random gold cards when you could just choose any card? Nagalfar plays your card. Oh. Plays one and move the other back to the top of the deck. I see. So this does more. Yeah, that is that's nice as well. So we can um bring that in. We need to find something else to lose though. Um what do we want to get rid of? You said you didn't like the Taskmaster, but it's it's there for de like defense purposes, so I don't know. Wild Hunt Boy or one Drowner. Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of Thrive things already. I like this guy because he does damage. I don't have a lot of things that just do damage. So let's get rid of a drown. Done. Purifies okay. Okay, we'll keep that. Let's see if we can, you know, after all of that. Oh, also you got a damsel. Yeah, that was it. There was something. Yeah. See? I knew I knew, you know. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like. And if you think you would enjoy more, then please subscribe. Or even join me live on Twitch. Whilst it's cliche, all of these will help the channel. On screen is something carefully curated or something the YouTube algorithm suggests, or maybe even both. In any case, have a great day.